Today uh, we're talking to filmmakers behind a film called The Bench, Your Every Thought Is Mine. Um, so congratulations and welcome to Kevin. Thank you. Thank you very much. Emma. Thank you. Alan, obviously, I didn't use your surnames on this occasion, but yeah, uh, welcome, congr uh, say congratulations for the film. Thank you. Um, who would like to give me a brief synopsis before we delve into the um, interview? Okay, yes, it's a lovely little film, um, shot in Poland. Yeah. Um, Basically, the story is about two homeless boys, yeah. uh, very jokey, very nice guys, so to speak. Uh, one of them has a car accident, mm -hmm. develops a mental power where they can read people's minds. Yeah. And, and before you know it, they're like trying to raise money, trying to like just enjoy life a little bit more than just you know somebody like yourselves would. Um, and there's two factions that have come and try to win them to go the evil path or the good path, um, so they can um, use their powers for one reason or another. Thank you very much. Okay, it's always the, 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 the same sort of opening question, which is where on earth did this idea come from? Who wants to tell me? How did it happen? Um, I think it sort of grew in Kevin's head initially. Um, we spent our Saturdays and any free time we've got over about a year, year and a half period to just try and sort of grow our idea. Yeah. But I think initially it was born in Kevin's head and then we all sort of added um, ideas initially and, and obviously it grew then into what it is hopefully today. And is there, I, I did look, but I can't, is there two or three writers on this? There's uh, me and Emma um, and the gentleman called Matthew McCarthy. Mm. Um, we all, like, like I said, come in on Saturdays and kind of develop the story from just rough notes. So, you know, yeah, it's basically three of us sort of do all the screenplay. Now, I know you said that uh, Kevin sort of initially came up with the idea, but where, what sparked that idea initially? Oh, I don't know. It's just one of them creative things, you know. And we need to explain why it was, it, you decided to shoot this film in Poland. He's a Polish okay. car, a cast mm -hmm. in this. I mean, obviously, this is really important. It was, it was one of them ideas, along with many other ideas, I guess, in creative minds that kind of just, you know, bubble around a little bit. Um, we was lucky enough for our chairman of the company, um, Steve Knabek, actually asked us to go out to Poland um, to film a orphanage on a special school. Right, um, okay. To, the, to do a bit of promotion for him, um, which is fine because we love travelling and we just wanted to help out. So before the, even the, is this before you even got to the germ of the story? Yeah. So yeah, you yeah. went over there and there's something sparked, you making this documentary? Absolutely, right, yeah. Okay, yeah. Okay. So, so if anything, the city sparked the imagination going because the actual locations was fantastic, wasn't it? Absolutely amazing. I mean, everywhere from, from you know from a cameraman's point of view, it's it's phenomenal because no matter where you point the camera, you know the shot almost frames itself because it's the the, the architecture there hasn't been touched pretty much for for, for sort of a good couple of decades. Yeah. So you've got a, a lovely mix of old mixed with new, yeah. um, sort of post-war, pre-war. There's a bit of everything in there, so you get a, a, a really interesting feel that you know which uh, well many of our locations are kind of almost in stone throws from one another because of the fact it's so varied in a, as a landscape. So typically explained, beautifully explained by a TAP actually. <laughs> so I'm guessing you were, you were part of the documentary, you will work together on this documentary I guess. Well we um, sort of, we uh, I've known Kevin sort of uh, for a good few number of years now so when, when he asked me about this project and he started to explain yeah. it, it was it was really exciting but for me and Emma we actually met in the car on the way travelling over. Right, okay. So it was because it and most of the, and some of the crew was like that when we all got together it was the, the first time we've all worked together um, apart from let's me and Kev sort of yeah, thing, yeah. but on a, on a project of this scale and this magnitude, um, we, we had no idea, we were all unknown entities to one another in some respects, so it, I mean that's a, that was another achievement in, it, in itself. So um, I know because you might, unbeknownst to you, I don't know if you know, but Kevin and I have had a few conversations, but now my understanding is that um, you were primarily doing documentaries before this, is that correct? That's correct, yeah, so we spent a lot of time in the States and around Europe doing historical documentaries, everything from like you know, John Lennon to, to Jesse James. Right. So this was something that we always wanted to do, is a very passionate project of ours. Yeah. Um, and just being in Poland made us realise this was the place to film it, because it was always going to be filmed in Wales. But with the support that we offered out in Poland, mm. the cast that we spoke to, or the future cast that we spoke to, um, you know, they was really, really professional in everything they'd done. There's all young people. Yeah, 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 I've seen, yeah, I've seen the film, yeah, 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 cool. So, so you know, we had a lot of different factors that actually um, made us go on and go to film it in Poland, in Lagnita. Yeah, I mean, I, I'm guessing from the experience you had making the documentary out then, then that, they say, sow the seed, and you were then start writing the story. I mean, I don't know, so write the story and thought, actually, yeah, shit, we, oh, no, let's not do it in Wales. Actually, Poland was really great. They say the architecture, the look of it, yeah, um, yeah. and perhaps we'll go, perhaps look at, look at filming there instead. Yeah, yeah. So, um, when you come up with this idea, and I know you're sort of kind of lead writer because you thought, this is what you want to do, but how do you, 
I don't know if it's say divvy up the work. I'm not entirely sure how it works. I mean, do you go away and write two separate stories, or do you just collaborate all the way? How does it all sort of work? Um, I think it would be classed as what we would say is like a writer's room. So we would all be in there together, thrusting the ideas through, um, and then I would sort of go home, make some kind of sense of it, get it in some kind of script format. We'd go mm. back again, then um, disregard whatever we didn't need, add new. So we was constantly, you know, rehashing it. But I mean, it was it, ideas from all of us, really, yeah, wasn't it? Yeah, and then it was I would do the sort of yeah, yeah, the writing yeah. then and go home and, and put it into some kind of script form. And when you're sitting there writing away or doing this um, brainstorming session, are you going, is it literally a case of, oh, well, I thought of this idea and someone else might say, no, that's not going to work, or why don't we add this, yeah, or I've done this, and, and maybe the other two go, oh, actually, that's quite a cool idea, and then is that kind of yeah, how it all comes together? Yeah, that's, that's absolutely yeah, I think yeah, you're yeah. constantly never out of your mind, so say, Kev would come back and say, I've been thinking about this in the week, how do you think this would go? And again, we'd fit it in. But I think then when we went to Poland, we realised that everything that had been in our mind was actually there. It was, oh, it was well, perfectly yeah. built for it. So, so kind of, the, I know you're always working on the script and honing it down, but the, the kind of finished story that we see on camera, is that pretty much the same story that you had finished writing? Or d were you adjusting it as you went, does that make sense? Yeah, we, we always had the beginning and end in our mind, beginning and end in our mind. Um, um, in the middle of it, we had to like delete, little, yeah. yeah, we had to delete a few little scenes here and there just because of the time constraints. And were you storyboarding? What did you storyboard the film? Yeah, we done basic storyboards, right, very okay. basic, because we were under like a lot of pressure for the time scale and everything. And of course, it was in our free time, it wasn't our nine to five job. So yeah, there's a lot of things like we tweaked, um, just compacted and tightened up a little bit. Because it was shot, was it two weeks you shot this? I know it was a very shot short. Shot in 14 days. 14 days. Yeah. <coughs> and you know, from the very beginning, we, we spoke to people, we got advice off people, and every single person said, for your first um, major, well, our first feature film, so to speak, to be yeah. filmed in a different country, none of us spoke the language, so we had translators in, we had a, had a young girl called Gosha who helped us as assistant director and mm. translator. Um, you know, it was it was a major, major undertaking for us. Um, like I said, first time filming a feature film like this in a foreign country, language barriers. Um, we only met the cast about three or four times before before we actually started filming. And can you explain how? I mean, I know we were. I was going to talk about this anyway, but can you explain about how you ended up casting the people you cast in yeah. it? Because basically, most of them. I don't know, Brian, what you can say, but had no acting experience. I think, didn't they? It's pretty much. That's right. Yeah. Um, they made it easy for us. Um, like when me and Emma first went out to do the casting, yeah. we had so much support from the local schools. There's all cast from the local schools. Um, by the time we got out there, everything was taken care of. So we had the teachers there that lined everybody up in the corridor, who was interested, and we just spoke to them one at a time. And we didn't actually uh, look at one person for one particular role. We wanted to see what they had to offer. Right. And then kind of, hmm, she might be suitable for you, she might be suitable for there, and you might be suitable for the lead role. Oh my God. So, you know, it was a process where we decided who was who as the casting went along. And everything must have been, again, I'm preempting, it must have been shot on location. There's no built stuff in this as such, is there? Everything's on location. And how does that, I mean, that must be quite challenging for doing for the cinematography. It's, um, it is and it isn't. Uh, I mean, obviously time was a, was a luxury we, we didn't have. Yeah. So it was a case of we just had to sort of get there, um, work out obviously lighting, because most of the time we were using sort of the sun for the exterior stuff. Yeah. And it was just like, right, okay, so what, what have we got to use? You know, what, what factors, are the, what time have we got? Uh, I mean, we, we threw a lot of the, the basic toys kind of just sort of went out of the window and it was, it was real kind of, almost sort of guerrilla kind of shooting in, in yeah, some places yeah, yeah. because we just didn't have the time to sort of to set up you know, proper big rigs and things like that. So we were working kind of, yeah, to, to the way and to yeah. our best abilities that we could. But in some respects, it was good because it, it kind of, it, it spurred us on, you know, quickly. We were able to move around and cover a lot of ground very quickly. And even though if we did have a couple of retakes, we could get them all done. And then it was literally, right, we've got two hours, two hours here. You know, there's no chance to come back. We've got to leave. Uh, in some respects, being from a documentary background helped quite a lot. Oh right, so because you're then okay, so then you're used to because I imagine what a DP really wants is time to set a shot, shot sure. up. Sure. But if you're used to we are, working on the front, yes. so this could have been. I mean, we, we, we've come from a background where you have to get to a location. You've only got two hours at this location, and you have to leave with something because if you don't, there's no program, mm. and you can't go back without a program. Mm. So you have to get it, regardless of any external factors. So I mean, that was that played a very very big part. Um, and which is so good working with Kevin because Kev understands the, the documentary side of things 
and obviously being a cameraman coming in from a documentary side of things we work very well because we both understood these factors that we have to get this shot and you know there's no there's no chance to go back and then we move on to the next location and we just kept on doing that for the 14 days and all the cameras you use exactly the same cameras you, you would use to make a documentary pretty much yeah I mean we we, we took a, we, our kit was um, quite minimal because uh, I don't know if it's been explained we didn't actually fly to Poland we drove through nine different countries <laughs> no I didn't know to that. get to Poland but it, but it doesn't surprise me because we drive all our equipment to every location yeah. I, I, I fly but it's driven to the so I know what's involved you know because we've got to get everything from A to B so yeah so there was there was four of us in a, in a car and the back was um, it's in our behind the scenes documentary <laughs> you lift the boot of the car and the back perfectly moulds to the back door <laughs> yeah, yeah. that's how neatly packed our car was stuff lashed to the roof you know um, we took it all over there so we had to be as minimal as possible so there wasn't the chance of having multiple lenses you know and, and we didn't even have the time to sort of to, to change multiple lenses all of the time mm -hmm. so we were really kind of almost it was almost a documentary kit that we needed to, to get this done i suppose that's a bit about modern technology it's tiny little di small digital camera not tiny but of yeah. course they're so amazing now you know i mean i've i've got a, a photographer side but I, I must say when i see films at the festival for instance they shot so well that when i compare it to traditional thief. I mean, I, I, you probably can, but I can't really tell the difference because it's so good now, you know, to me. And of course, it's the portability. Of and of course, it still has that thing. If Kev goes, you know, I need a shallow depth of field there, it, it can still do that. You know, you still got, you can still give what the director requires uh, on these on these rigs. And when you when you were making, oh, sorry, about to shoot this, and I say, I know predominantly it was documentary filmmaking you've done, but all of a sudden, you're making a narrative feature, a uh, a feature that's um, fictional. Are you, are, are, were you thinking, fuck, this is it? I've, you know, this is, I, I'm, I, I hate this saying this out of my comfort zone because I really hate that saying. But you, was there any point you thinking, yeah, I, I can do this because I've made loads of films, but actually this is completely different because suddenly we built something that didn't exist. Or was it just War of a Duck's Battle? I don't know how it worked. No, no, it was, it was something that I think we knew we could accomplish if everything went right. Yeah, yeah. You know, like we had, um, us three was, was part of the team, we had Gosha, um, our, our sound guy, Richard Warner, who, yeah. who was our editor as well, we had, and Matthew, we had a wonderful team that worked in harmony together. Do you know what I mean? I think one of us actually said, if one the one person dropped out from the team, then it might, you know, not have gone as well as we would hoped. But you could cater for that, I suspect. You've got sort of backup plans. Yeah, yeah, we always had a backup plan, but, it was just everything seemed to be on our side. Do you know what I mean? The weather was good. You know what I mean? All the locations from one to the other, everything went so, so smoothly. Mm, mm. Do you know what I mean? Even now, when we tell people we shot in 14 days, and the number of locations we visited inside the world yeah, it is was, was, was quite an accomplishment in itself. Like, without being, you know, recognized by the good people like yourself, like, which, which is fantastic. Because our main objective was um, to get as many youngsters in as possible. Because a lot of the extras are from two special schools, yeah. uh, one in Trigger, yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, one in Abbeville, sorry, and one in, one in Poland. And we wanted to make it really special for them too. Yeah. So we actually um, flew two school trips over. Um, they kind of twinned up with um, the Polish schools as well. So, you know, it was a really international project. There was a lot of things going on. It wasn't just, just a movie, so to speak, that we shot on, but it was a device that brought everybody together. You know, we made wonderful relationships, which is still very strong today. And um, with you, Emma, were you, I know you're there predominantly in the co-writing role, but are you there on set every day tweaking it or help? Yes, yeah. What, um, what, are, you, what are you doing on well, a daily? Normally, daytime job would be court clerk, so a lot different to what I'm doing now. Um, I always dreamt of sort of writing. Oh, sorry, you're, you're a court clerk. That's, court that's, right, okay, that's yeah. my, my normal job, yeah. so slightly mundane. Um, but always dreamed of writing and only ever did shorts. So um, meeting these guys sort of furthered my dream, really. And, and how did that I happen? How did that all sort of come about? Um, I just simply went over and said that I'd do some volunteering for them, um, oh, right, making yeah. tea, wherever, um, and ended up writing a couple of shorts and kind of liked them. So then it was, dare I say it, a feature next, which was quite daunting but enjoyable. Um, but yeah, I was there through the whole um, 14 days and they're on set every day and trying to do as many different types of things and then sort of ended up with the producer role as well. Thoroughly enjoyed it, went slightly grey, um, but yeah, thoroughly enjoyed it. And, and like I say, everyone pulled together, so if we didn't have that, I don't know where we would have been really. It made my job a little bit easier. So when the film was finished and you're seeing it, I know, I'm sure you're seeing I don't know if the word they use dailies anymore because of course it's all digital, but you always see the progression of the film. But when you've actually seen, when you see the film complete and actually on screen for the first time with an audience, can you explain the feeling? Is it possible? 
Um, I think I was overwhelmed. I mean, obviously it was Kev's vision initially, so I'm hoping that in his head is how it looks now, the end product. But yeah, I was just overwhelmed really from, uh, from the help of everyone in the town and just all of us coming together as a team. So the court, clock, the court clock, clock's job, you're kind of thinking, I really want to get away from this. <laughs> I wish, if only, yeah. yeah. No, no, I'm sure you will. I mean, this thing, you just don't know. It leads on to other things, doesn't it? That's, that's what it's all about. So can you tell me about the reaction from, particularly with the, it's the school children I'd like to hear about, how they've sort of taken to this and what's been their reaction to this film that they've, they've obviously all now seen? You know, it's tremendous, it's tremendous, because what I was really scared of was that we made some of the props, you know, we didn't want to be embarrassed about it. Mm. You know, we shoot something 14 days before it could come out like a lot of crap. We just didn't know, but we just didn't. And it was mainly, I think, down to um, the good working team, like I said, but the actual um, acting skills of these youngsters. With you know, no acting so, experience. Yeah, no yeah, acting yeah, yeah. experience. They were so professional, you know, they knew the script down to the last word. Um, every time, you know, there was only an handful of takes that we had to go over, say, three or four, maybe five. Yeah. Um, but yeah, the reaction from the youngsters was, was phenomenal because I think it was about 30 or 40 that just come over from, from Wales. That's without the, the youngsters that joined us on, on set from the special school and, you know, from the other schools as well out in Poland. Um, but we went out there, we gave them a test, uh, a, a test in round about October-ish. Yeah, but then I think we so what was the post? Sorry, I should have asked you. What I know it was a fourteen-day shoot, but how long did, was it for post? Oh, of course, it took the best part of about seven months. Right. Okay. So it was yeah. Quite, yeah it was. Yeah. So it was very involved. Post. Oh yeah yeah, 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 yeah. It wasn't just you know you're going to shop together. You know, we had wonderful, um, we had wonderful backup from musicians, local musicians who got involved. Yeah. Uh, a friend of mine done a wonderful little soundtrack for us. It was actually based on the post first four new notes. Swan Lake, oh, right, okay. um, you know, and that was um, that was a fluke really because I bought a small little wooden music box when I was out there just to bring home, and it was Swan Lake, um, and we kind of developed that into the soundtrack. But yeah, the, um, the response from Poland and from the youngsters when we actually showed them, the, it, it was fab. You know, I mean, everybody really enjoyed it, and the teachers thought it was great. Um, all the local officials who, who helped us um, out there thought it was fantastic, and that was my biggest fear is to go out there and show the film. And for everybody who done so much and put so much hard work into it, we went, yeah, yeah, it's all right kind of thing. Like, but the response was excellent, so so that was a big thing for us. As long as they were happy, we were happy. And is it changed? This is to all of you, by the way. Is it changed? Oh, I don't want to make this seem. Um, I would say, has it, has it changed? Yeah, maybe. Yeah, has it changed you as people? Now you've been through this experience. I I think. I think Kev will agree with, me, agree with me on this. One of the, the uh, sort of the final meals that we had to, to, to say goodbye and everything. Yeah. Uh, the lady who's in charge of one of the schools where the pupils have additional needs, she basically stood up and said, for the main actors, um, it's it's the beginning of their careers. But for her children that she looks after, she said it, it's possibly the highlight of, of, of their life. Uh, and that just you know, if yeah, if, yeah. if that doesn't sort of hit you as a you yeah. know as a uh, that you, you've got a heart of stone, like you yeah. know, and I know Kev uh, really sort of like yeah, really it touched it, us. It, yeah. yeah, you know, you couldn't, you could, and, and to think that we went out to make a film, but in doing so, you know, you've we, you've you've sort of enlightened and brought some joy to other people's lives. Yeah. I mean, that is that is something incredibly powerful, and, and and for me, that was kind of that was one of the best and uh, sort of most memorable things yeah. was that that just that little quote that she said in one line. Just yeah. sort of opened the box and just kind of went. I didn't even. You don't even think about going beyond the film and, and sort of the impact that film has. Uh, and I think for me, it was, it was certainly an eye opener uh, right from the very beginning. Uh, especially when you know Kev said, as, as you said, you know, I want to do a film in a foreign country. You know, we don't you speak don't the language. language yeah. uh, you know, are you up for it? Uh, and and he's, and he's like, I need an answer. And I just went. What the hell? Yeah, go. <laughs> let, let, let's, you know, and, and, and it, it was an absolutely truly experience, and, and I'm so glad I said yes. I'm so glad Kev asked me to do it because, it, yeah, it's been phenomenal. And what about you? Because I, I, I don't want to say you're a newbie to this, but you are the one. No, no, I am. I am. So newbie. is it everything you hoped it'd be, or is it I'm more, more than? Yeah, and right. I think it's like you've said. You know, the emotional side of it was overwhelming. To have that connection with someone in a different country was amazing, and to still feel like we can go back there now and it feels like home is yeah, is emotional. Yeah, oh, but yeah, I would like to do it as, as a full time job. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, you know, I um, I mean, this isn't about me, but I I always say that I wouldn't do um, anything to do 
of what filmmakers do, but only because, I mean, I admire yours, it's an amazing thing, but I think too, because filmmakers, whatever they do, you know, whether it's in front or behind the camera, um, they might seem really quiet people, but they're all really driven, and I know that, because if you're not driven, you're not going to get anywhere, you know, because it's a competitive industry. But what I love is um, that um, it's not a corporate thing, it's an artistic, it's a creative thing, isn't it? And I get that, and I think that's a great thing. But, um, you know, like I said, I'll turn that off to, you, to all of you, but, I, you know, I, I can only imagine sleepless nights, you know, because I know you, I, you I don't need to ask because I know you do because I know all filmmakers do you know and it might be because the shooting's going well it's not going according to plan we're about to start filming this whatever it is and I don't think I could deal with that so you know it's it's a tough thing to to have to to be able to take on board but it's I can see that the passion in every filmmaker that I meet that they are really driven and that's a good thing because what you want to do is get your vision your your project out and then you're on the screen you know and it's a, it's, um, it's a great thing. What's after this? What's next? Well, we'd always like to do a, a follow-up page too. Uh, oh, right, so we, you're looking at a sequel. We, we'd love to. Of course, we've got, like, like all things, we've got to raise the money and everything. We've got an outline story, which, which in my opinion is probably a bit more powerful than, than the first part. Um, yeah, that, that's our, 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 our next project. We're filming a, a gritty horror film in, in October. Um, and you're all involved in that? Yeah. 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 Okay. Involved okay, that. lovely. Um, we, uh, and we've got various other little projects going on, we've got a few animations, um, a few documentaries still, which you know is a bread and butter of the company. Yeah, yeah. But, but, but for this, this movie, like, like for, for, for me especially, I don't know about you guys, but I really look at it as a, as a pinnacle, just because the accomplishment in a short period of time, um, the involvement from all the people from another country and, and you know, the bonds that we made, and the story itself, like, you know, I think it's a lovely little story. Um, it can be looked at different different ways on different levels, you know. Um. Yeah, because I like the story behind the story, which is always yeah, my favourite yeah, yeah, yeah. thing. Because obviously I get to see some amazing films, but now that I've heard the story, and I kind of knew anyway because of our conversations, that to me is just like really interesting. Uh, why you decided to make it, and you know, you moved when you're in Poland, and you know, you had some wonderful reaction. And I really, because often said to people I've interviewed, you know, have you ever thought about making a film about the film? And I know you've done a, you've done that because it sounds like you've done like a behind the scenes. Because you often see, again, it gets back to this struggle that I was talking about, whether it's finance or getting, all, all hundreds of things that can go wrong. And I just think it's really, really interesting when, you know, you, you, you do anything you can, or whatever's needed, I should say, to get your, your vision out there. And I, I really think that's the best part of the questions that I'm asking people. Because they'll always come up with something interesting. Because I know damn well if I would say to you, tell me about something that you weren't expecting, you're all going to come up with something. Or did something happen? Because it always does. You have to. There's always an unexpected thing that goes on, isn't it? Oh yeah, yeah. And, and what Em was saying, you know, about our roles and things. Everybody had so many, you know, multitasks kind of thing. Like, like some of the time, Em would be, you know, be, being directed, uh, helping out on the direction and stuff. I was on the camera work. You know, we all kind of like, you know, rotated on our different roles and things like. So, you know, it was a real team effort. Like, you know, what I mean, a yeah. real great team effort as well. And and now you, I know you're, you're predominantly there for the writing role. Mm -hmm. And that was sort of your job, but having been right really involved during the shoot, was there anything you you thought actually this thing's really interesting? Was the editing or the photography? Um, I think the directing side of it, sorry, Kev, uh, <laughs> was very difficult. Um, quite liked it because it was quite creational. Um, yeah. You know, you could sort of think, right, where am I going to go with this? But hard work. But yeah, I quite like the producer role, but predominantly I like the writing side yeah. of it. And for me to go from a five minute short to a feature, I just doubted myself so much whether I could do that. But. Plus you did look at home behind the megaphone. <laughs> 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 For the final yeah, scene like where that. we had a load of extras, Emma did a fantastic yeah, job in, in sort of chaperoning while. and everything. So yeah, there's, there's, a, there's a couple of pictures with a, with a, with a megaphone. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, they, you know, I did touch upon this. Someone give me a story about something that happened that you weren't expecting. Oh. Some of that was you expecting. I, th I think the one scene we turned up first thing in the morning was lovely weather, absolutely sort of, you know, good to go, perfect lighting, ready to shoot. And just before we got into position, the football stadium just across the way started up its music no, and it was yeah, having a full yeah. training session, I believe. No, no, it was, it was a full match. It was a full, full match, match. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And I mean, literally within a stone's throw across the park. 
uh, and of course the sound was just 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 ruined so we had to try and sort of well I think we just had to wait day out yeah, and see what we could shoot it, sort of just down the way anywhere near come back and then wait for that to die and then literally then that had taken our time to next to nothing and we just had to go yeah. go for it and it's one, one of them scenes where, where all of us have little parts in it mm. because you know we, we we needed actors to fill certain roles and everything so I think I'll he was a doctor. Emma, Emma, two little parts in the way she died away, just to double up and things like. And I, and I, I was, I was one of the bad guys. Um, so I had a lot of lines in Polish that day, which you know was such a struggle to learn anyway. Christ. So to do it in between roaring and cheering and yeah. you know and and you know waiting for half time so the sound would uh, would die down a bit. I think that was a challenging day. Yeah. yeah. And when you're, I mean, this is for, for you two really. When, when you're about to when you're put doing the story when you're part involved in the story how do you kind of motivate yourself i mean do you do you blank ever or do you just sit in a darkened room or do you just have total silence you have, i don't know beethoven on the background how does it work yeah we had a lot of Anne zimmer in the background didn't yeah, we we had yeah, a, a, Anne zimmer, Anne yeah. zimmer blasting right, okay. in the background and just just you know perhaps three or four just hours to, yeah, of just looks and zimmer songs yeah, in the zone tracks, yeah so there's no point is there any point that you're like shit this is I'm, oh what am i going to Sort of do next? I think there were a few fraught moments, but we just pulled yeah. together and, yeah. and got on with it really because we knew we didn't want to let anyone down, especially the, the people of the yeah. town. And one, yeah. one, just, once the wheels are in motion, once, sorry, yeah, once the wheels are in motion, you know, we had we an option, we had, we had a conflict where we, where we started, otherwise, we, like Em yeah, said, we'd we didn't be want to lose so the work we did. Like, so. Yeah, yeah. So, you know, we, we, we had to push on no matter what. Yeah. So, how long did you have to actually write the, 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 put the story together? How long did you leave yourself? Um, I think we wrote it over about a year and a half. Then yeah. we sort of pinned it down and rehashed it quite a few times. Um, then we had to have the script translated, of course. Yeah, and yeah. that was massive. We had to be that was a big job as well. Yeah. Um, but no, I, I don't think there was ever one time that we thought we can't do this. No. Mm. No, not once. No once did we think that we couldn't do it. A lot of people who we spoke to really thought that we couldn't. So what yeah. the hell are you doing? Yeah, yeah. yeah really yeah. Thought. Which, mad. which made me even more determined. Mm. I think. Yeah, you got. Yeah. yeah, that's right. You got to step up and do it. Yeah. Listen, thank you, all of you. Thank Brilliant. You. I knew it would be a great interview. They always are. Well thank done. You. And the best of luck. Thank you very much.